So Premiere Pro has a brand new color management system that is going to forever change how you color grade and color manage your footage. As you might know already, Premiere Pro has not been particularly a leader when it comes to color grading your footage compared to other software like DaVinci Resolve. But if you're still editing your videos in Premiere Pro, you're going to be massively excited about this brand new update. One of the key things that you'll be able to do for the first time in Premiere Pro is the ability to work with your footage in a wide gamut working color space. This feature alone, I think it's going to vastly improve your color workflow in Premiere Pro. In this video, I'm going to be going over Premiere's new color management system, and I'll be going over some of the things that you can keep in mind when you're color grading your footage and take advantage of this new feature in Premiere Pro. As of the time of the recording of this video, this is still very brand new. It's in the Premiere Pro beta version, version 26.4. So if you wanna follow along, make sure you get that version of Premiere Pro beta. I also wanna say that I am not a professional colorist, but I can get by with minor color grading of footage. So this is what was happening. You had locked footage. Converted to Rec 709. And then you color this footage, but you only get to color this footage based on this information, not from what you had here originally in log. So this is what was happening in Premiere Pro before. But now you have your log footage You transform that to also a wide gamut color space, roughly the same size. And then you do your color. The resulting image is going to be much better because now you're able to work with all of that information in this wide gamut that came from log. I suppose to this tiny one from Rec. 09. So for the new color management system to work well in Premiere Pro, there are two essential transformations. The first transformation involves you going from your input color space to the working color space. So you first identify your input, whether your footage is in Rec. 09, in log or in raw, and then you convert that to a working color space where you can do your color corrections and your color grading. If you have clips from multiple cameras, it is key that all of these cameras, all this footage is converted to the same working color space. And this will allow for a consistent color environment. This is the key step that was missing in previous version of Premiere Pro that DaVinci Resolve already had. This is, for example, the color space transform that you can see in DaVinci Resolve. And this is essential, especially if you're matching footage from different cameras. So I've made a video before about matching different cameras using DaVinci Resolve and how to make them match seamlessly. So I'll link that video somewhere here, here or below, but I'll also be making a video of how to do this in this brand new color management system in Premiere Pro. So make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for that. The next thing to keep in mind in this initial input transformation is that if that footage is in log or raw and it has a lot of data and color information, you need to transform that into a working color space that is able to take in all of that information. This is where Adobe's wide gamut tone mapping comes into play, but I'll go over the exact details of that in just a bit. So after you've done all your corrections and grading, you go from that working color space to your output color space. This will ensure that your final video says stays accurate in terms of color and it's able to be viewed across multiple devices by the different viewers. So once you're in the Lumetri panel in Premiere Pro, you can go into settings, and toggle down preferences and you have display color. Under display color, I make sure this is selected and this way I can display accurate color values on any monitor. This next one has to do if you're working with HDR footage, which we're not, so we'll leave that unchecked. Transmit device playback has to do with you outputting a video feed to an external monitor. So we don't have to worry about this here. And under project, these are the settings that you are assigning at the project level. So some of these you can just leave as default. So HDR graphics white, I'll leave it at that, 203. 3D LUT interpolation, 
I select tetrahedral. Viewer gamma, we have a few options and that will depend on your final output. So if it's going for broadcast or TVs, you'll select 2.4. If you're going for browsers and web, 2.2 and 1.96 for QuickTime. This is important if you've ever experienced that desaturated and washed out look when viewing an exported video in QuickTime on a Mac. So this is going to fix that. Keep in mind though, that if your final video is going to YouTube, for example, you might not necessarily want to edit in this space because your final video is not going to be going to QuickTime, but instead to web or YouTube or people watching YouTube on a TV. So for myself, I'll just keep it at 2.4 broadcast. So Premiere Pro can now automatically detect your log footage or your raw footage and automatically convert that into the color space that you're working on. So if you're working on a Rex 09 color space, then that will be converted to Rex 09. And this is huge because now you don't have to add in input LUTs and conversion LUTs. This next feature enable color space aware effects. This will ensure that effects like lumetri or curves will respect the working color space and maintain that color accuracy. So you can keep that checked if you want that to happen. So let's go to this clip over here. If I toggle this on, I can see that Premiere Pro has now automatically converted that footage to the sequence which is now set in Rec. 09. And this one by default has already been converted as well because this one has been selected. If I turn that off, it goes back to your log footage. Next, we'll go to source clip. This is where you can manage the color space at the individual clip level. You can choose to add your own input LUT, but actually let's go back here and select color manage auto detect log in raw media and I don't have to add anything else because this has already been automatically transformed. You can also override the media color space for each individual clip. So let's select this clip and you can select one of these presets that Premiere Pro has. But because I've, it's already been done automatically, I'll just go back to use media color space. You can also select to preserve RGB. So what this means is that once you have it selected, it will bypass that automatically lock conversion from Premiere Pro. And the cool thing about this is that if you're not happy with a particular automatic transformation, you can go under each clip and let's say if it was a different camera, you're not happy with that transformation, you can go under each clip and have this selected and bypass that automatic transformation. Gives you a little bit more control over what's happening. Let's toggle that closed. And the next one is sequence. This is where you can manage that color space at the sequence level. So we had project, then source clip, and then now sequence. And this is really important because this is where you'll be setting up your working color space. Under color setup, you can leave it as direct Rec. 09 SDR and output to Rec. 09 if all of the footage that you're ingesting is already in Rec. 09 and you have no log footage or raw footage to work with. So the workflow will be pretty, pretty simple. However, if you have log footage or raw footage, you may want to select one of these three wide gamut presets that Premiere Pro has. This will allow you to take advantage of, of all that extra data captured in your log footage. And what's more important, it's, it allows you to work in a color space that is industry standard, the ACES CCT. And up until now, this is one of the reasons why DaVinci Resolve has been so much better at color grading than Premiere Pro because it allowed you to work in a wide gamut working space. And now we have ACES in Premiere Pro. So I'm really happy about it and this is exciting. There is a ton to unpack when it comes to explaining what ACES is specifically, but this is completely outside of the scope of this video. Just know that for the purpose of this video that this working space allows you for full flexibility in dynamic range when it comes to color grading your footage. So as you can see, if I select my gamut tone mapped under this advanced tab, the working color space switches to ACES CCT. Let me show you what I mean by being able to have more flexibility with that dynamic range. I have here a clip shot in s log 3 So right now, color setup, direct 709, and I'll go to edit and I'll turn that exposure maybe plus 2.0 you can see that there isn't much color or detail in the highlights so let's bring that back and now we go to settings and then now under color setup our working color space will select wide gamut tone mapped 
And now our working color space is ACES CZT. Let's go back to edit and let's adjust that exposure again. Huge difference, right? Now you can see that a lot more information is retained and it just shows you that there was a lot more dynamic range available to you to work with in the first place, but because you were in Rexen 09, you were sort of deprived of that extra data. And now you're able to use all of that data to correct and grade your footage. So if I go back to settings and I'll just toggle these ones back and forth from Rex09 to one gamut tone mapped. With that minus 2.0 exposure setting, you can see that the difference is huge. So next under output color space, that will usually just default to Rex09, which is how you'll export your final video for the majority of people to watch. Unless you're exporting HDR footage, then you'll select one of the other ones. So output peak luminance, I'll just leave it at 100 nits. You can't really change that anyways if you are in Rex09. Next under advanced, this was automatically changed to ACES already because we had selected, oops, white gamut tone mapped. But for these next two, input tone mapping and input gamma compression, these are applied during the initial input to working color space conversion. So that means that the conversion is happening before image effects are applied. So this can simplify SDR or Rec. 09 workflows because it's simple at the expense of occasionally making it more difficult to get detail in the highlights that ends up being overly compressed. This is typically used when the working color space is not wide gamut. So I'll leave that unchecked. Input gamma compression. This compresses the out of range colors of media in a larger color space to fit within the current selected working cars color space. And this happens before any effects are applied. So I'm just gonna go and uncheck that. Output tone mapping and output gamma compression happen after all the effects are applied during the final color conversion for export. So this will ensure that any lumetri color adjustments you have made will remain high quality and high fidelity. And it'll preserve original highlight and shadow detail from the original footage as much as possible. These adjustments happen all at the end. So there's only one setting that applies to the entire sequence so that all the entire sequence remains consistent. You are able to fine tune your export with the settings under output tone mapping and gamma compression. These are algorithms that produce slightly different results based on the, the tweaks that you'll be making. It is based on the range of color and the contrast of your image. The quality of these is kind of subjective, so you can feel free to experiment with any of these to see what your final output is going to look like. And these default settings will generally give you good results for a wide variety of media. And finally, under sequence clip, you get some information on what's happened to whatever clip you are selecting in that sequence. So for this first one here, it says that the original is Sony S-Log3 footage that has been converted to the ASUS CCT working color space. From working color space to output conversion, you're going from the ASUS CCT to Rec. 09. With this, you're able to quickly see what's happening with that particular clip to see if everything is in order and correct before you do your final export. So that is how you use Adobe's new color management system and let me know what your thoughts are on this. I am generally quite excited about this. I've been waiting for Premiere Pro to do this for a very long time. And if you're a Premiere user as well, then you probably have been waiting like me, anticipating better color correction, better color grading experience in Premiere Pro. The next thing for me would be for a better Lumetri panel with better controls, at least some similar to what Adobe Lightroom has. I think this is a massive step for Premiere Pro when it comes to color. So let me know if you learned something new from this. Let me know what your thoughts are on this and stay tuned again on another video they'll be making soon on how to use the system to color match footage from different cameras. So thank you again for watching. And if you're still around, here are a couple of videos you can watch next and I'll see you there.